Hello, hello. I'm Debbie, and I'm back for another Facebook Live audio room. I'm going to give you guys some time to get in this room. Hello? <gasps> hello. Hello. Hi, Debs. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Lauren. Oh, my gosh. Hi. We Hi. Hi. have joined at the same time. This that is cute. cute. Welcome. <laughs> hey, all oh, y'all. Who am I? Am I from hey, Texas? y'all. You're me. I get in, I get in you're do, you're is me. Deb, you're Ryan. Can That's I right. This is going to be hard. <laughs> Wait, you know what's Sarah. amazing is that I've worked with Lauren, Sarah, I've known you forever, and Debbie, I've known you forever. This is a nice little reunion. I know. It's very exciting. Lauren, I haven't seen you since um, Clipped Days. I what? know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Time is since Kingston was in the house. Uh huh. Oh wow, you guys! This is a fun. This is a fun reunion. It actually this is, is like good. feels like as as much overlap as there is between all of us. This might be the first time that all four of us are in a room, digital or otherwise. I'm sure we've all so. been in a room together, but like we've never all hung. No, yeah. I know. well now Not we like have this. to. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this, where we're all little dots on a screen. We're all little dots. <laughs> I um, love all of your icons. I'm just staring at. <laughs> Oh, oh my God, my picture is so old. I got short <laughs> hair. You do have really short hair. Yeah, we're all sort of in the same tone. I do feel like I look very different from that now. Um, yeah, I look extremely. Debbie, it's I love your hair lately. It's so cute. Oh, thank the you. The curls. I love the curls, Deb. She brought out the curly bangs. I'm so yeah, happy. Love. <laughs> we're doing yeah. it we're doing it it's getting bigger and bigger this is when i step into tour wife mode and i'm like i'm gonna wash my hair once every two weeks like i don't <laughs> i gotta, it. it's just gonna get bigger and bigger are you telling me that i live my entire life as a tour wife <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> i know i'm like i'm single and i don't wash my hair so <laughs> yeah okay. perfect okay great so this is a universal desire i think yeah. oh yeah that might have been the yeah I, f I, I got to this point in the pandemic where I was like, why did I do all that? I used to do so much. Why did I do all of that? <laughs> I know. Putting on hard pants, doing the whole thing. Same. I, I haven't I, worked out in over a year and just live in life, eating cake. I it's really great. haven't either, and it feels crazy. I, but I, I was just reading this, like, New York Times fashion article. And by article, I mean Instagram caption. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was Sounds about um, women, like, going gray in the pandemic and realizing that they, like, like how they look with gray hair because they usually oh, don't yeah. get to um, do that. I actually um, discovered what my real hair color was because I don't know about you guys, but I've been dyeing my hair since legitimately – since I was 13. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. turns out it's, like, a shade of brown that I didn't even know existed. And I have <laughs> – a lot of gray as well. I got my We're first humbling. gray hairs during this time, and I was terrified. Of, like, plucking I think out, everybody like, did. <laughs> I love it. It's so like it's so debonair. It's so like sort of saucy. I love silvering and graying hair. I think it's so pretty and cute. It looks Agreed. cute, except for when it's like four white hairs that pop out <laughs> the top of your bangs. Like I have. That's true. You just got to like that. She a wit. She got the bangs. <laughs> She's like, mostly I'm not here, but if you look, I'm here. <laughs> um, all right. So just to let everyone know what's going on, we have people joining us, and they're here, and we're seeing like these thumbs up and these hearts, and that's cool. You guys can keep doing that if you're like into what we're talking about. If it gets very still on the hearts and thumbs up, we know to pivot the conversation because. Yeah. We we can all just go. We're just in the middle of something like really deep and meaningful. And we're like, never mind. People don't like it. <laughs> um, no, so you guys feel free to share and et cetera. And just to let you guys know who all is hanging today, you know this. But our first guest, she's a true wifey type. You probably met her as Haley in Modern Family, iconic. She's a real rascal. She's been hosting Lady Parts, produced by Ellen. So you want honesty and transparency. This is your girl, the Sarah Highland. We love Woo! you, Sarah. Woo! Thanks, Yay! wife. Thanks. She's a rascal. She's a wife. She's a rascal. All right. <laughs> and our next guest, you met her on Pretty Little Liars. And you've seen her in Truth or Dare and Fantasy Island. And so her series, Ragdoll, drops on AMC. 
on November 11th, which I'm looking forward to getting sufficiently creamed. Lucy Hale. Hey, Lucy. Lucy. Yay. A Glad natural brunette. <laughs> A natural, like, dishwater brown brunette. That's me. That's <laughs> her. Insane. That ass brown. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> um, and finally, we have Lauren Lapkus. She's the wrong Missy in the wrong Missy on Netflix, but the right Lauren. Um, you can catch her <laughs> on Good Girl. A dumb joke. She is two very good, very fun podcasts. I met her because of a podcast, and uh, hers are very special and very good. Freedom and newcomers, Lauren Love. Hi. So, all right. I mean, before we start, obviously, everyone knows, share the room, do whatever you want to do. We're just chilling. We have like an hour of time to burn, and I have a feeling it'll go really quickly. So if you want to hit the arrow, share this room with all your friends, put it on your wall or whatever. And this is my last Facebook audio room. We wanted to go out with a bang. This Ooh. is three different wonderful voices of women that I respect and admire. And if I see them at some industry event or at the grocery store, I run to them and say, a real person, let's yeah. go. Let's go. <laughs> These are the ones I love. Um, so here we go, ladies night. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we can sort of just get into it. Obviously, all of the ways in which the last couple years has been jarring and complicated and um, really challenging for everyone in, in different ways. And, you know, we sort of understand some of the more publicly talked about ways. And I think it would be really interesting for us to just share, you know, as, as work stuff shifts and as sort of actors for hire and we all have different hands in different you know corners of the production process and in the industry but it's uh it's sort of it can be all up in the air for us you know you you sign a contract and you're on a tv show and so you can't do anything else and then it ends and you're looking for your next thing and it, it seems as though maybe you're really busy but you're still auditioning a lot and not booking or you're really really busy and you're on top of the world and you just you know maybe it's a role that doesn't you're looking for the next thing or whatever it is, that sort of momentum I feel like is always in flux and has been such an interesting place for me to grow as a woman all throughout my 20s. And I know you guys have both been doing this for a while. So as we've moved through this being such a present part of our life and finding footing and stability in an otherwise really uncertain industry and then getting hit with the last couple of years where the momentum just comes to a halt and different, you know, platforms are being utilized and different size projects are being greenlit and things that we thought we could count on went away. Um, it can be so scary. I know, Sarah, not only do you have like certain levels of medical protection to provide for yourself in a really scary time, you also, yeah. I know you had to postpone your wedding in the pandemic. Lauren, mm -hmm. you recently became a mom, which is the hugest undertaking and the most bad yes. thing a person <laughs> can do. Um, and I can't imagine doing it in the pandemic. Do you guys want to yeah. talk about how have your priorities changed in the last couple of years and moving forward? <laughs> Sarah, you want to go? <laughs> priorities, man. Um, <laughs> I, priorities are, are a thing. Um, and it, it, it is strange. I mean, obviously, my health has always been a top priority for me because it's 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 always had to had to be and you know when we had to go into quarantine we had just um i think we were two weeks out from finishing the entirety of modern family wrapping that oh my god that's crazy little guys, wow you yeah it all during the pandemic no, we wrapped it two weeks before. Oh, lockdown. two weeks before. Oh, wow. wow. So, yeah, because we normally do, you know, 22, 24 episodes a season, but for our last season, we only did 18 episodes. And what's crazy to think about is that if we had done a normal season and not a shorter one, we wouldn't have been able to film yeah. our series finale. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm so grateful that um, the timing worked out in that sense, that we are able to actually finish a – 11 years of um, love and work and laughter and ups and downs and all that crazy stuff. And um, I hadn't, I don't know if I've still processed it yet because I was like, oh, by the time August comes around, that's when it will hit me because we're not going back. You know, like when you graduate from school and then September hits and you're like, oh, I'm not seeing these people every day. What's happening? Um, yeah. But then I was like, oh, right. wait, I'm getting married in August. We'll see each other anyway, whatever. And then, you know, the pandemic hit so, so fast shortly after we wrapped that 
Mm. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I just get to be home. And I immediately knew my like witchy intuition. I was like, we're not getting married this year. We're not doing anything. We're wow. going to be in this for at least a year, if not more. Like, this is not happening. Hold the wedding planning as it is. Wow. And wow. Wells is such like a sweet, romantic, optimistic person, unlike myself, that he was like, no, it's <laughs> happening. And I was like, no, trust me, it's not. Um, so for my priorities in that sense, I, I, I was really looking at, you know, just finally getting to be home with my fiance for an extended amount of time with the work that we both do. Debbie, it's, it's, it's very similar with you and your, your beautiful man, um, mm -hmm. where it's like a lot of travel and, and not seeing each other for months at a time and things like that. So I was really grateful to, um, under horrific circumstances, be able to have that time together and to really um, grow as a couple and build an even stronger foundation. I also just, you know, really honed into myself as a person and the, the things and people in my life that I realized were toxic, I was able to get rid of. And it was just, it was kind wow. of like, um, like a lotus. It was, it was very much like a new beginning and, and new growth, not only for me as a person, um, for me and my romantic relationships, my French, all, all the relationships in my life, I was really able to just kind of sit down and be with myself and hone in on what was good for me and what wasn't amidst mm -hmm. all of this madness and, and craziness. And um, obviously, I, I couldn't leave my house at all because I'm a kidney transplant patient, for those who don't know, um, and I'm on immunosuppressants, so I'm very, very high risk. Um, so I made best friends with my couch and that was lovely. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I was just really, my priorities have always been my work essentially, you know, like my work yeah. has, has been my first and truest love I've, I've ever known. I've been doing it for over 26 years now. I've been in this industry and working consistently. So to be able to not even have the option to work was to have that to be uh, taken away was really just uh, jarring, but also kind of a, a, a bit um, relieving in the mm. sense of I'm able to truly be with myself for the first time. And of course you go through the whole like, what am I meant to do? Who am I even? Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. If you don't like, you know, you like your, your work can't be your identity. And I really learned that about myself. It's like, really, who, who am I? What do I want to achieve in life beyond work? Who do I want to be? What kind of uh, person, fiance, future wife, future mother kind of stuff. So yeah, I think it's crazy. Me. Like the idea of of just slamming to a halt. I mean, the show that you really had spent so much time on and growing with, like completely ending and then going, like it's just the the hardest stop. And I think probably for a lot of us, like it, a stop that, even though there are natural ebbs and flows in our industry, is like a, a stop that like could not have happened. I, I just wouldn't no. have created time for that. Like not to that degree. Oh yeah. I think there's such a like culture of, going 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 and like as you know I, I think essentially we're like freelance workers you know like we're looking for the next thing like you said yeah and like you're kind of always on edge in a sense like we're ready to go like ready to do the next thing and I feel like for myself like I tend to say yes all the time I want to do everything and my life was really going 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 always traveling and doing live shows and any jobs that came up I was really excited about and I really, I agree, Sarah, that my identity was also kind of tied up in my work. And that was like, I liked that. But then when it was yeah. all taken away, it was like, oh, shit, like, now what am I going to do? And right. So it's kind of a, it was kind of a scary thing beyond, I mean, you know, I think we're, we all can agree that it was an incredibly scary life experience to be going through a pandemic in general. But then when you're just pulling, you know, zooming in a little bit on our like micro problems of like, what am I going to do now? And I think there's, there's definitely a layer of fear that was there with that. But then for me, <clears throat> my priorities 
shifted to family building. And I think that it was something that I was working towards in my life already. Um, but, you know, with the way our schedules can be, it was just like a very difficult thing to, to make happen. And I think yeah. the silver lining for me, like the incredible silver lining was that I was able to use that time to have a baby, which I'm, you know, so it, it was everything I've wanted um, oh, for so long. And so it was an amazing thing to do but at the same time also very scary because you know in a pandemic I was like I'm not seeing anyone I'm not doing anything yeah. because I don't want to risk anything and yeah so I was really hold up at home and I think I'm a bit of like I, I like to be a homebody when I can but like I, I'm not really someone who wants to like stay out late and you know keep the party going all the time I like to kind of just chill but um, it was like a next level version of that where I just like to have no friends for a year. <laughs> but, but yeah. like, okay. Lauren, I didn't realize you had a baby. Yeah, I'm very so... recent. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Just so excited. Thank wow. you. Wow. It truly yeah. is the perfect time where, you know, yeah. like for, for someone to, um, uh, have part of their identity wrapped up in their work when like, you really are not able to work and stuff. It really is the perfect time. Julie Bowen kept texting me being like, you should have a baby this year. It's the perfect time. <laughs> well, it's true because it's so hard to, it's so hard to give yourself that break because you're afraid of losing the momentum. And I yeah. think even like ma taking a maternity leave in this business feels kind of scary because you're like, well, there's yeah. going to be a forget about me. It's going to be like months where I'm just not there. Yeah. Um, and so it's been it's been comforting in that sense where I'm like, well, I'm not missing out on anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, on the opposite end, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wow, my lives are so drastically different. Like, Sarah, you're engaged. Wait, Sarah, you're not married yet. You're engaged. You're yep. getting we're, we're, okay. it's, it's we're, This is going to turn out to be like the five <laughs> Rub it in. Ooh, it it's off. insane. <laughs> So um, Sarah, crazy. you're not married, right? Sarah, you never made it to the wedding. <laughs> I, no, I, didn't, I didn't know if you guys had like a secret, like a secret <laughs> nuptial. Um, no, I mean, for me, I, I finally felt, felt like right when the pandemic or the lockdown started, I was like, wow, I finally feel like I'm open and ready to like settle down. And like my priorities over the last couple of years have shifted from, you know, working all the time like I put my work you know I, I kind of have a lot some shame about it like I put my work above my relationship sometime yeah and I think that that's yeah. it. and even over mm -hmm. like my mental health because my work like yeah. you guys said like it makes me whole or seemingly yeah I put so much of my identity and self-worth into it and I think that you know right when lockdown happened I was like you know what I I feel healthy I feel strong I feel like I'm ready to open my heart to you know the next chapter of my life and then boom um everything happens obviously out of our Oof. control but i but i literally did all of lockdown alone which so many people did wow. you know and it it felt like uniting in in that way that i knew we were all feeling similar things but i will tell you like like loneliness i didn't know you could feel for like myself but also for everyone else that I knew were going through similar things but I will say it was such a necessary time for me to like realize wow I use my job so much as like a band-aid for wow. yeah, mm -hmm. I, I needed to like really focus on things that 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 I desperately needed and wanted to change in my life and I honestly don't know if I would have unless I was confronted with like oh you're not gonna do shit for a, a year you're yeah. going to work for yeah. nine months. And, and, uh, and, and in the meantime, here you are, like, we're go you, the universe is now going to trap you in a room with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, not my worst nightmare. <laughs> Rip the bandit away and place you in front of a mirror. <laughs> right. It was daunting. But, you know, in the long run, I mean, I think we all can take away some really beautiful moments. I think we all, like, kind of got to the heart of the matter in different ways. And I think that that's, you know, tragically beautiful in a way, but, but, so. I, but I will say I am, I am happy that, to be working again because <laughs> it's nice to have a distraction. Yeah. Totally. Have you met yeah. anybody yet? Have you met your lifelong person Girl, yet? no. Hook She's still up. looking out there, guys. This is now a matchmaker show. Where there is Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> there is matchmaking. I love it. 
she um she and I are Caitlin and Tasha, and we're about to. Let's, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Let's just start our own Bachelorette show. It's I fun. would watch that. <laughs> I would watch that it's so always- hard. <laughs> ring ring executives do we have a judge <laughs> show for you <laughs> um lucy i think something that you mentioned is so important and just i mean i want to thank you guys for being so vulnerable and open because i think it can be easy for people to go this is me and my beautiful baby and my happy life this is me and my fiance this is me having my successful career and then not realize like when we and and we as young women in the industry, but also we as members of a society that perpetuates and rewards us being valued by external things, us being valued Mm -hmm. by whatever Mm -hmm. product they're selling us, by the job that we're doing, by who we are in relation to men, who we are in relation to other women. Like that, I think there's so much noise when it comes to identity. And I think to me, like you guys have seen me at, very, very low, weird, bad moments. And those moments were informed by me having outsourced my validation and my identity, me doing whatever I could do to avoid loneliness and being alone with myself. And in those moments, like I got my wires crossed crossed, and I was confused and I was destructive and I wasn't able to love myself. But it, it is true when you outsource those things or you sort of hide behind those things or like, and I do think, work is a huge part of my identity. Who I love is a huge part of my identity. My friends and being a public person and being a private person, all of those are parts of my identity. But when one of those things becomes outsized, then it can Mm -hmm. become really disillusioning and so scary when all of those things sort of get pulled away and you have to be back with that thing that you've been using them to avoid. It's that balance. Like I've been trying, like I've gotten like full blown into my witchcraft and stuff, which you know me, I've always been witchy, but like (laughs) full blown, like I have like an actual like apothecary, like in my, I can't even call it an office anymore. It's just my witch room. But like, so are you doing spells? I'm legit sitting at my altar right now with my my incense and candles burning and stuff. Um, but (laughs) what I have been focused on (laughs) is just finding that balance, you know what I mean? Like your career is never going to be the most successful if your home life isn't, it is depleted, you know, it's finding that balance of like all four areas, like four elements of your life, you know, just like the earth, like we are all nature. I'm going to stop with my (laughs) woo-woo. I'm so sorry. No, I was into it. I love it. Yeah. You, yeah. Crunchy, crunchy, recognize crunchy. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think you're so right though, because there were times in my life where like my personal life wasn't good, but I was like doing so much in my career that I was, I'm like able to say, Oh, I'm fine. Everything's really good because I'm externally looking good, you know? And I think then you're like alone in your car and you're like, shit, I'm sad. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. it is is like that, you know, whatever it is for you outside of of your job, like, for instance, like, when I was doing Pretty Little Liars for a big chunk of that time, it was at my personal lowest, like saddest, weren't Mm. like really bad personally. But then the times I've been in the best place of my life personally, like, my show got canceled or something or like a family member passed away or whatever. So it really is like, and you know, that's life. It's like ebbs and flows of yeah. life. And I think that with what we do, there is no job security. That's what I realized. No matter how much success I've seen, like there's always going to be the rejection and like, I'll always mm-hmm. be like fighting mm-hmm. for more. And I think, especially after pretty little liars was done, like at, at its and Sarah, you can relate like modern family, pretty little liars. Like those shows were like, a phenomenon and yeah. I like I don't know if I'll ever beat that and so like that might have been my peak and so I have I've had to like learn that that's not sustainable and ultimately like whatever that peak is that's not going to bring me happiness like I think we all can agree that anything externally like you were saying like that's not where true happiness comes from and, yeah, yeah. so it's so interesting because I think like I came into this business later than you guys I was in my 20s and like I think that was a lesson that it took me a bit to figure out like, wait, all these people who I've seen, you know, my whole life, like on TV and in movies, they're still feeling like they haven't reached that place or something. There's, there is no like end to that feeling. 
And that's so yeah. unhealthy, ultimately. Right. You can't be living your life always going like, it's not good enough. Right. Yeah. But yet this industry kind of makes you feel that oh, way. Yeah. That oh, yeah. You really sure. have to, at least I personally have to check myself. And like, social media, good Lord. Like, oh. I, I, I don't know about <laughs> you guys, but I, I truly have to step away because I start, I mean, you know, you know the feelings of like, oh my God, I'm not doing enough. Yeah. Or why didn't my career go that way? Or like, I need to hustle harder. And it's like, why? Since, and I read something the other day about like hustle culture. Why is it, why do we praise running ourselves thin to the point of like emotional breakdowns? Like, that's not cool. <laughs> why are we not? Oh, like, that's the design of the ourselves. system. Unfortunately, yeah. that's like all of the messaging from everything. Yeah. And I think like, we are so fortunate to have access to people sort of acknowledging that, have access to therapy, have access to other people sharing what they've learned with their therapists. And people can go, just so you know, like we, I don't personally value hustle culture as much anymore. It's hard for me to not internalize it. It's hard for me to not go like, you know, when you see those magazine articles and it's like, where are they now? And it's like, what? She did a movie oh, three God. years ago. Like, what yeah. do you mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, where are they now? Like, it's a long. It takes a long time to do a thing, but also like that sort of internalizing that and internalizing like comparison as well. Which like comparison is the thief of joy, as they yeah. say. That's yeah. like the yeah. big thing about social media. It feels like this echo chamber, and it feels like everything. It's new levels, new devils. You get a thing, and you want to be Ooh, I've never honest. Heard that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. We could sit and think about that for a moment. <laughs> yes. My new tattoo, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll tattoo that across your chest for you. Just Please right across that. your clavicles. That would be <laughs> lovely. Like Eve tattoos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very big. Yeah. But I mean, I, I do think that like whenever I go back to it and I think about like little Debbie dreaming about having her own trailer, like, and, and, and dreaming about, you know, being able to get paid to act and like, and realizing, okay, no matter what level I'm at or no matter who has sort of, because Lucy, like that thing that you were talking about, about having been in an iconic thing and then going like, what will now? anything I do eclipse yeah. that? Yeah. Like what now is this the peak? And, and I think there's also this whole thing where people are like, how do you show people that you're not that character they met you as? Uh, and it's yeah. like, yeah. it's just, you have to do it patiently. You have to know that whatever you do, people won't digest for three more years. So like, right with patience but it's tricky it's it feels it can feel frustrating but yeah. i feel like and it's also you have to really like like count your blessings especially over this pandemic like listing out things saying out loud like changing the molecular structure of your body for your gratitudes and for, mm -hmm. for what you're like truly grateful for this pandemic even if you like had a really shitty mental health day you can look in the mirror and say i can breathe I'm alive. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that I was able to get my booster vaccine, you know, things like that. Yeah. Like, where it's like, I am eligible for that because of my health. Do I have shitty health? Yes, but at least I'm able to be in a country where I can get medical attention to yeah. help me from a deadly virus, things like that. It's just yeah. so important mm -hmm. to remember what you have and what you have succeeded. It's yeah, true. yeah. And like the monotony of day to day life, like we forgot that. And so in a way, like I realize the things that I love the most and the things I'm grateful for are truly the most simple things in my life. Like, mm -hmm. literally my favorite thing in the world, my favorite time of day is waking up really early in the morning and making my cup of coffee and sitting on like my front steps, like nothing makes me happier. And it's like things like that. And like, my relationships with my family, like I'm truly by nature an introvert. And I realized, you know, not seeing people for so long that I need that human connection to feel mm. like full. And mm -hmm. it's like that. And like, I, I'm so unbelievably grateful for all of the people in my life, like even more so. And um, yeah, just kind of feel, feel closer to those people more than ever. Lucy, I love what you were saying about like, just first thing in the morning sitting and having your cup of coffee like on the stairs and giving yourself room for that first acknowledging and identifying that that is a thing that brings you like serenity and is you at your happiest yeah. and then creating space for it and prioritizing it so I would say like 
what do you guys find has become your best tool for rest and for reconnecting with yourself in the midst of all of the sort of static? Mm. Well, Ooh, I, I've reached a point of literally no rest right now because I have baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I soaked up a lot of good rest uh, for the last year, I guess, which was good because now I don't sleep at all um, and I'm very tired. <laughs> but I, I think for me, I mean, I, I've uh, one thing I noticed about myself during this time was that like because I was alone a lot of the time, I, I live with my husband, but we also, you know, would give ourselves space or whatever, or there were times where we just weren't together. I found that like, I would fill in the silence with like a podcast or music. Like I was kind of always listening to somebody say something mm -hmm. <laughs> and that I noticed that in myself. I was like, why do I feel like I have to constantly hear a conversation or yeah. like, mm. feel like something is happening? And so the moments when I've not been doing that, I've found like, oh, this is actually very peaceful. But I think it also speaks to a little bit of what Lucy said. Like, I, I like being alone, but I also want to feel like I'm not alone. And I'm finding like, okay, I'm really missing that connection because so much of my social life, I, I do improv, I'm a comedian, and like so much of my social life is going to sh do shows and seeing people at the shows. And it's kind of just natural that I would run into so many of my friends and not go out of my way to make plans with them. And so without having that at all, I'm like, Oh, I'm just missing like hearing people and like fucking like yeah, totally. talk totally. and like being yeah. funny and like being funny with people and like I can just I guess just listening to people be funny is kind of like filling some part of my brain a little bit with like that joy you know little light up part like I don't know but I it's, it's kind also of a fresh that. inspiration like it's a yeah. fresh human inspiration like those of us who sort of exist in conversation with people mm -hmm. acting comedy it's like conversation about the world conversation about who we are like response to people so much of you know whatever acting is reacting and I think so much of us <laughs> is really inspired by what we're taking in and mm -hmm. is sort of a response to those things and when you don't have that stimulus it can definitely be maddening yeah yeah I think I started to like I mean, I think that like there's a part of me that was like, I'm, I like being alone. This is good. And then I was like, I think that's not true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually I, had the opposite reaction to that because I feel like the people who would know me would, and who like truly know me would consider me an extrovert. I obviously have no filter. Debbie even texted me before this was like, <laughs> anything you don't want to talk about? Have you developed a filter I don't know of? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't foresee that happening in the future at all. But <laughs> I actually realized I truly do love being alone and just like sitting in quiet, you know, like Wells is an avid golfer, which is wonderful for um, a social distance sport to be obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And um, I also think it's important for for people in, in lockdown who live together to have separate times to for themselves. But um, but I, I, I truly did love just being by my self. And it was scary to be alone with my thoughts, literally my nightmare, my, my nightmare. But I, I found myself like not even responding to texts to friends where I was like, I just don't feel like talking right now. I just feel like being in, in this moment and being by myself, whether it's playing solitaire or watching all of The Office or Parks and Rec in legit one week, I did that. I think I might have set a record, but, um, <laughs> but I, I really, I, I, I love finding... I, I love that I have found serenity with being by myself. Even just yeah. yesterday, I was just laying in my witch doctor office floor uh, in the dark <laughs> with candles around me. Um, Your apothecary? Listening. Your coven? In, in my apothecary, Rose's apothecary, just uh, mm -hmm. laying on the floor surrounded by candles. Probably not fire safe, but still, um, I just was doing that for three hours to a point where Wells knocked on the door and he was like, are you okay? What's going on? And I was like, I'm just being with myself and, and that's it. And I do love what you said, Lucy earlier. My fav one of my favorite parts of the day is waking up and having coffee outside when it's yeah. like that, like crisp, fresh, like dewy air. It's just, it's the best. It's magical. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that's it's really beautiful it sounds like we're all like in the same spot that like we can be alone but not lonely because like my family is always like are you okay I'm like yeah I'm alone but I'm cool like I yeah. actually like yeah. like hanging out with myself now like I'm not that bad <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I came to find out but hey you're cool like, I'm <laughs> um no but I think for me I learned that how I sort of disconnect is 
you know, I wish I could be the person that could sit and meditate and like sit in quiet, but like, I can't, I am like a very a busy mind, busy body. So like, I love, there's a hiking trail next to me. And like, that's sort of my me time almost every single day. And I just go. That's impressive. And I mean, and it's not even like, active. From a, but, but not even like for, a, it's not exercise. even like exercise. Yeah. It's more oh, just okay. like, I, I love I just like being outside by the ocean. Just, it really sort of grounds me a little bit. And, um, but, but I will say that I, I got to listen to like a true crime podcast or something. Like I can't do it in <laughs> silence. <laughs> I have to have something that kind I of. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I realized that I would like be listening to podcasts, doing my chores and sort of doing my silly little tasks and then would go into like a zoom meeting and, sort of take a breath before and be like, why am I so socially burnt out? I haven't spoken to a person right. other than yes. Josh. But like realizing I was constantly filling my head with chatter, which I like. I like hearing people talk. I like hearing people go back and forth. I really love witnessing other people. It's truly like the, that's the thing. That's <laughs> yeah. like the heart of it all that I'm into. And I, it does burn me out. I, I realize like, it's hard for me to get burned out. Obviously, when you go on set, your job is to pretend that you are alone in a room with one person and but still be aware of the 80 people all staring at you yeah. and like <laughs> not be aware of them. Like I feel that, you know, we sort of have to to exercise a muscle of being how to be learning how to be around people and to still protect your own space and that's something that I wasn't great at and I J Josh actually <laughs> told me that I would get to this point where I would go on set and I would be like, no, I don't want to go. I'd be packing to go. And I'd be like, I don't want to go. I just want to hang out with you. And he would be like, you are like when someone drops their kid off at kindergarten and they're like, don't drop me off. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then you go in and you make friends and you have a fun time and you're really prep present and then it's time to pick you up and you're like no I don't want to leave those are my I friends in there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally extremely me to do so I always have to remember at the moment where I'm like I don't want to do this whether that's going and spending time alone if I'm like oh I don't want to do this this feels uncomfy let me not just sit in silence or oh I don't want to go and sort of have to be a person being perceived by other people this is it's embarrassing to exist in a body I still have to just remember no matter what like I always like it. It's always fine. Yeah. I always like yeah. find something out of it and can protect yourself in it. So well, again, thinking about what you said about burnout, like I, it's been kind of interesting because I, I think we've sort of recalibrated and like our threshold is lower or something because during like before the pandemic, it's like I could do 20 things in a day and I'm like, I, I feel great. Yeah, now I'm like I can do one thing and I'll do it poorly. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm oh just, yeah. Like, I find I'm myself so tired. Too, like two minutes into a conversation with someone, I find myself like saying weird stuff and being <laughs> like, "Oh, the social tact like has a your social stamina is thin. Like yes. you, your capacity, you have a limit. You've met it." Uh -huh. Yeah, I get super tired when I hang out with like one person. Like I'll have like sit in the yard with someone for a little bit, and then I'll be like, "Wow, that was a lot." And like before, that's just like not how it was. You know what I mean? I think it's just like yeah. so much time alone and like not socializing and not working and not being active in that same way that you were. And then now it's like any attempt at that feels crazy. Totally. I'm seeing all these thumbs up. I feel like people are definitely <laughs> relating. Yeah. They're like, yeah, no more interacting with people. I <laughs> only want to hang. <laughs> I only want to listen to podcasts for the rest of my life. That's it. <laughs> well, also, I don't know about you guys, but like, my whole thing is I'm only doing things I want to do from here on out. Jobs, hanging out with people. Yes. Yes. Yep. Like, what, I don't know what I was thinking before, but I, I think it's just like I've learned how to like set boundaries, but like life is too precious to not do things that excite you or ful fulfill you. And, um, you know, just, just agreeing with you, Lauren, that, I, our, my threshold is lower, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's kind of yeah. good for all of us. It's making you more selective. Yeah, and I think yeah. the perspective as well of knowing, like, we are not promised time with people. Like, we think mm -hmm. we'll always have so much more time with people, and we just don't know if that's true. And and we cannot and, – and also, like, that can be in terms of, like, life or death – 
And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have lost people over the last couple of years and that really, or have gotten close to, or have been really scared for people's health. And that has definitely put so much in perspective of saying the things to the people while I can, trying to prioritize time with them, calling people while I can, but also like if you're a friend who I enjoy laughing with, but every time I hang out with you afterwards, I feel like bad and small. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think I have room for you anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I was thinking about that, Sarah, cause you mentioned, um, losing, you know, toxic friends or like purposely cutting them out or ending those relationships. And I feel like this time was really good for that sort of reflection of like, who do you want to spend your time with? Because also it's sort of a risk every time you hang out with somebody in this, in this pandemic so like is it going to be worth it for me to do that with somebody and who do I really want to sit and chat with and catch up with and who makes me feel good and who do I leave like not second guessing myself you know there's those friendships where you're like oh why like why did I say that or why do that's like wait why does that person make me feel like I shouldn't have said that or you know whatever like just things that make you question yourself Yeah. yeah yeah I'm a big um I'm like a hobbyist and I would say one of my biggest hobbies is sitting on the shower floor wondering why I said that and wondering (laughs) what I should have said instead and if I should interact with them in a different way moving forward to make it right (laughs) and then realize like no one ever remembers the things I spin out about but certainly the people who are like no it's fine it's cool we're all just chilling great there's room for that yeah yeah I mean Debbie you gave me amazing I actually think was it I, I forgot what time is anymore because the mm-hmm. past pandemic years, it's like it, it's been so fast, but also feels so long. Um, I remember coming to your house um, yeah. and you gave me some um, amazing advice in, in to what we're talking about, uh, where it's like they make you feel like that. They're doing those actions. If you feel that it's okay. Like you have permission to feel a certain way for how someone's treating you or how a certain mm-hmm. thing is going and and setting boundaries. Um, and I remember that really like that conversation that we had, mm-hmm. I left your house just feeling so light where mm-hmm. it was just, I, I felt like you like pushed this like massive boulder that were mm-hmm. on my shoulders where it's like, oh, it's okay that I'm, feeling this way because my feelings are valid and I think that's something to for everybody to be able to take away over the past almost two years now yeah no matter what you're going through like your feelings are valid and it is it's okay to just exist yeah (laughs) and we're responsible for how we treat people and we're responsible like we're we're all socially, you know, we've been, we've interacted with people. We've all been to school and been in rooms. Like we know to some degree or another that they, we have a responsibility to be aware of how what we're doing is landing with people. And there's Uh a healthy balance of that. There's a version of like existing in your truth, but there's also a version of being tactful and sensitive and responsible with people's feelings and with their vulnerability and openness with you. And I think like, if you make someone feel a type of way, there's two things. It's like one thing, which is like, is she intimidating or are you intimidated? Like there is something oh. about oh, how yeah. are we receiving this thing based off of ourselves. And there's also a thing that's like, you're responsible for how things are leaning, but you're also just responsible for how things land on you. If something lands, whether or not someone is malicious, whether or not someone is even just careless with your feelings, if it feels a type of way for you, your job is to protect that like your job is to be like "Ah, I don't think that this there's like there's no world in which someone is worth me having to do a lot of work thinking on end for days at a time going back and forth about why this feels this way and why do I feel bad and how do I need to work Mm -hmm. on that Mm -hmm. like it's I think there are a few people in life like if there's something that I get tripped up on in my relationship with truly my family, my husband, and my few best friends, those are people that I've decided that they are worth that commitment. And everyone yeah. else, it's like, if boundaries. I feel a type of way, it's not worth it. Yeah. Boundaries, boundaries. Boundaries. Yeah, but I know what I, 
You know what oh, I've also God. realized, and it's made life so much easier, that like literally nothing in life is personal. If someone treats you like shit, that has more to do with them than it has to do with you. Totally. Like, because I used to take everything personal. Like, for instance, I'd be at Starbucks and the barista would be really rude to me. I'd be like, well, why don't they like me? What did I do wrong? Like, should I have been nicer? Should I have paid, tipped them more? And it's like, no, they could be going through hell at home. And yeah. so... I, I don't know. Have you guys read The Four Agreements, the book? I'm sure you guys have. Oh, um, yeah. No, but I've read about this. I've, so I it's know like, a little bit about this. Yeah. So it's, it's essentially like four very simple rules, which I probably won't be able to remember. Remember off the top of my head. But it's four simple rules that you should like live, live your life by. And it's don't make assumptions. Always do your best. Don't take anything personal. And what's the fourth one? I don't know. Be impeccable really with your good. word. Be impeccable with your word. Thank you, Debbie oh. Ryan. Um, yeah. And it's like if you if you live your life that way, it it just really simplifies it in a in a way that's easy to handle. I mean, it's obviously way easier said than done, but yeah, yeah, no, but that's so right. Yeah. It's like all you can do is like be be blameless. Like if you say something, make sure that it's true. Do what you need to do to like make that true, or don't say it if it's not true, or kind or necessary, whatever. And then like yeah, don't take it personally, which is the hardest one for me. Like yeah. I I genuinely think whether or not this was about me, is there something I could have done to to mend this or to avoid this or to get into this and like work through this? And it's like that's actually not my job, and that's like but a hard know, thing to let that's go. A, it's really hard because I think it's, I sometimes will go, okay, I know that's like I can see that that's not about me, but they think it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Know, how yeah. Do yes. I, oh my how god. How do I accept Lord, that? Yes. Yeah. Like that yeah. that person is still thinking it's yeah. me, even though I'm going. I know it's because of this or this that you're actually being like this to me. But so yeah, it's like that. That then that's what makes me spiral because I think I can like sit on. And that's something I'm curious how you guys handle as well. Like I, if something is going wrong with somebody, I'm like, I will think about that forever. Like I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah. not doing anything I'm, related I'm, to that. And it's like getting in my head. Yeah, I'm very much a person that's like, I like to fix things. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I like my favorite subject in school was like math. So I'm like, if, if there's a problem, there has to be a solution. And, mm -hmm. and I like to overanalyze things and be like nitty gritty with stuff. And so I will overanalyze things to a point to where like, maybe he was a bad therapist, but my old therapist was like, <laughs> you're going to put me out of a job. You're just therapizing <laughs> yourself. I was like, don't think that's a word, but okay, I guess I won't see you anymore. <laughs> um, and so I, I always like to, fix things and and that's when last year I was like I'm 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 done trying to fix other people I have not been prioritizing myself um which yeah. I think if other people think that you prioritizing yourself is selfish or in a way thinking that you're too big for your britches kind of kind of situation it's okay what they think if, as long as you are setting your boundaries and and prioritizing yourself to fix yourself instead of others then i think that's where a disconnect lies and that's where also a beauty lies yeah yeah i have a hard time with that because my desire to fix things and i'm the same way sarah like i'm very much like puzzle brained like if there is mm -hmm. a positive there's got to be a negative like there's got to be something you can meet with everything and it's gotten to the point where i realize people can perceive it as confrontational but to me it's like a caring dedication to be like, I'm committed to making this better. I'm committed to figuring out where the d disconnect is in our communication or in whatever this is. And that's just because like, I care about the friendship or I care about us both being seen. Like I think that people at our core, we want to feel seen and understood. And I really want to make sure that if someone's talking to me and we're missing each other, that they have the opportunity to feel seen and understood and I'll commit to that. But sometimes it can be just like, just walk away. And that's what I'm learning right now. It's like, you can't convince someone of something if they're not mm -hmm. willing to be open-minded yeah. or have their life change. Josh like laughs at me because on airplanes every once in a while, we'll get a flight attendant who just does not have the time of day for me. And he <laughs> sees it. He sees it in my eyes and he's like, you want to win her over, don't you? And I'm like, so bad, so bad. I want her to like me so bad. I'm just wanting to laugh once and then I'll like, whatever. And he's like, maybe she doesn't want that like don't and it's like helpful to be like okay great choose my battle so funny that because i do the same thing i'll like smile extra hard under my mask on planes yeah it's just like people pleasing like it's too much but, yeah. but what's that saying it's like people can only meet you as much as they've met themselves that's not it but you know what i'm saying like yeah, whoa yeah yeah, yeah. 
is is that it, Sarah? You probably know. Is that yeah, I think I think I mean it's it's I, I I what I have heard is that people can only love you as much as they love themselves. Yes, that same yeah. idea. But I, but yeah. I think it's the same sentiment. With like they can only meet you in like a certain communication and a certain love. It, it yeah. it's it's very tandem with a lot of things. Yeah, and and that depth as well. You know, I like had someone the other day who was just like sort of joking with me a lot and was like, I was like, mm, when you joke like that, it hurts my feelings. And they were like, okay, but you would prefer me say this thing to you, which is like an actual criticism. And I'd be like, absolutely. Because to me, that telegraphs that you care about me being better. So like, I can actually mm -hmm. be tough if you say to me, hey, that, that didn't land the way that you thought that it landed. Or like, this is like, you could maybe work on this. That to me telegraphs like, okay, great. We're trying to make each other better. But if we're just sort of like knocking each other down, there's no productivity in that. And it doesn't, you know, like, I, I do hold the people that I love to such a high standard. And, and I hope that, like, I, I surround myself with people who are willing to come up against me and sort of create a little bit of friction for that. Because yeah. I have to be able to trust that you would never abuse that. And that if there's friction, it's because you believe in, like, us having the best version of our thing. But also, like, I'm not, like... I know people use it as an excuse to like fight a lot in their primary relationship and stuff. And I really don't. I'm also just about peace, but I think it is such a tricky thing. Like the idea of being met, only being able to meet someone as deeply as you've met yourself. Like anytime you hear an idiom like that, just turning it around and being like, okay, maybe I can only understand someone like this person who I have a hard mm -hmm. time understanding because I have yet to meet myself or understand myself right. or love myself as deeply. Debbie. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. that's so important because I think a lot of times we get like and I think on Instagram there's such a culture of this like sharing quotes or things like that and then going like yes I'm the one who is right on that quote like that's who I'm I'm, I'm right. the one who's met myself more than they've met themselves or totally yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, everyone's <laughs> thinking that when they look at it like so then there's you're never gonna but it, I think when I'm hearing that I'm like I think the important thing is thinking like there's so many levels to what that means but the the levels aren't necessarily better or worse it's just like that person's on this level with themselves. I'm on this level with myself. They're just like different levels. They're not like they're higher, you know, they're like a, at a higher point than I am or something. Yeah, it's like, like the apples and oranges. Yeah, because I think yeah. you can, I mean, I, I've had situations where it's like you're in a thing with a friend and it's like you're not seeing eye to eye and you're not making, you're not able to resolve a conflict. And I feel like I, I know that what I'm thinking, I can guess that they're thinking that we're both thinking we're right. And like, we're yeah. not willing to bend or whatever and it's just like whether i think debbie i think your point of like sometimes you just have to walk away is is totally true and it doesn't it's not like a failing because it's like mm -hmm. sometimes you're just not able to see what someone is saying and they cannot see what you're saying and like it doesn't mean yeah. one person is more evolved or less evolved or something and i think that sort of goes back to what we were talking about about priority shift is like what is worth my time right now like what is worth my frustration, my vulnerability in wanting to hear, like, if I go into every conversation and I know about myself that I go into every conversation holding space for the fact that someone might be right or I might have my mind changed about something or there is always a different perspective I haven't considered. But that can be an exhausting state of openness to approach things with if I'm constantly approaching every conversation that way. So mm -hmm. I do think it's about being a little bit strategic, being like, I'm going to say what I believe. And then not evolve this into a debate or whatever so that it is more powerful when I go, hey, just so you know, like, here's this boundary or whatever, even just mm -hmm. in and of myself, like my own relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, ladies, we're very close to being at the end, but sort of to tie it all back together, as we were talking about gratitude earlier, and I'm seeing like these thumbs up and these hearts, and that's so sweet. I feel like people are very into it. And you guys have brought so much wisdom and so much vulnerability and and having seen you guys and having like sat I feel like I've like sat on the floor with with each of you in different floors um, <laughs> like we really no, sort of Debbie, literally we have <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I just got an image yeah. in my mind I just got a flashback <laughs> same <laughs> I mean, well, I'm sitting on the floor with you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all Marina sit on the floor. Del, Way, Del Rey spread eagle. Like, that's what's <laughs> yeah. happening in my head. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> A moment in time. Um, 
And this brings me to my gratitude of how far we've come. <laughs> Girl, yeah. Girl. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, like you guys have gone through so much individually and together and like sort of with the people surrounding you in relation to the industry, in relation to different sort of friends that you have communicated with. Clearly you guys are seeking like betterment and rest and uh, a greater understanding of how to be not only in relation to the world, but in relation to, you know, yourself first so that everything you bring um, can be intentional and thoughtful. And I think that like makes the spaces that you navigate so much better. So thank you guys for all the work you've done on yourselves. And thanks for being so open and sharing those lessons with people. Um, I guess I just want to ask you guys, what are you grateful for today? Woo. Well, (laughs) I mean, like you said, growth, like the level of growth I've experienced, my health, definitely, Um, just like more social awareness. Honestly, today I'm feeling like extra grateful for my dogs. (laughs) Oh, buddy. uh, Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple stuff, but I, but I think that um, you know, I'm grateful for the resources we have for like our industry. Like it's so amazing, um, you know, connecting with you guys and having these conversations. Like I, I'm not much of a small talker. I like get off on these kind of conversations. I just love (laughs) it. And I, it's been so nice and lovely. So was grateful for today. Definitely. Nice. Same. Uh, Yeah. I feel, um, I'm just totally in this new mom phase right now and I'm very grateful for my daughter and every second with her is so cool. It's just like crazy to look at a person and be like, you're a person. <laughs> like, I can't believe that I have a baby. <laughs> it's very surreal. Um, and she's like laughing and smiling now. And so that really like just makes my whole day. Wow. Um, she's just very sweet. And I'm I'm also grateful for this conversation. I thought it was really cool. And I um, it was really helpful to hear your perspectives on things because I'm, you know, feeling like uh, we're it's, it, there's this feeling of coming out of the pandemic, but also knowing that we're not at all coming out of the pandemic. And so there's still yeah. time to be looking inward and focusing yeah. on yeah. how to be better. So I appreciate it. Um, I am grateful for... (laughs) (laughs) It's like Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm super grateful for my health and modern medicine. Um, I am also just very, like you said, Lucy, super grateful for the growth that not only... I have achieved thus far in my life, like my whole life, um, but also for the growth that I've seen with all of you amazing women. Um, I think it's really beautiful watching people blossom and um, and I, I, I feel really grateful to be able to even have the wherewithal to see that um it's it's just a really beautiful thing and um i'm always grateful for just having a a man who is okay with uh sharing my heart with my work (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah um i'm very very grateful for that i've never had that before and that is something that i'm truly grateful for as well as my dogs and as always like i say to you debbie I hold space for you. I appreciate mm-hmm. you, and I am grateful for you. Thank oh, you for creating this beautiful you. space for us yeah. to talk. I'm Thanks. so glad you guys were here. Thank you so much. I am also very grateful for just the openness and the transparency and just the fact that we're, like, interested in it. We're not sort of, like, dutifully being like, okay, I'll show you our heart. Like, it feels nice <laughs> to be, like, seen <laughs> and to, like, see other people and to be like, oh, that's cool about you. I can't relate. And I love that you, you know, that's an interesting thing. Or I feel the same way. Like, that either way sort of being able to treat it. And that is so healthy and helpful. I'm really grateful for animals and I'm around on this tour where we have our dog gym with us and I'm just so grateful for animals, baby. And then we're around babies too. And that is really nice to see, I think. And, you know, I call my grandma all the time. And I just think that like, 
being around different stages of life and people, different people, especially I think women and femme presenting people who have figured different things out in different orders. Like all three of you guys have figured something out or have sort of navigated something that I have not yet. And so to know that you guys are sort of open with the work that you've done and, and I think it can be very easy when we have found our own path in something and had to work really hard and been challenged through figuring something out. I think sometimes people's tendency is to be like, well, no one helped me do it. So I'm not going to share that with anyone else. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes everyone around us actually so much better if we're able to be like, listen, if I can like give you a boost, you know, I would not want to have had to start here. So like, let me just let you know, it's like a really cool and special gift. And it's on behalf of all of us, I think. So Thank you all for that. I feel grateful for you guys. And um, I hope you have a great weekend. I love you all very much. Oh, my gosh. I have one more thing to say that I'm grateful for. I'm so sorry. A few days ago on the 19th was a four-year kidneyversary for my brother giving me his kidney. Oh. Yay. Um, Yay. I posted Amazing. in my stories and stuff, but I just want to say on this, because the internet lasts forever, um, <laughs> thank you, Donovan. I love you so much. Thank you, That's Donovan. So amazing. Thanks, Donovan. Sarah, I'm very grateful you're alive. Um, I'm grateful my family is, like, alive and in good health. And whenever I see people who have made, like, direct eye contact with terrifying medical situations, I just think you guys are true heroes. And I'm grateful. Also, nurses and everyone in the medical community. Yes. Yeah. Biggest oh gratitude. Yes. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. Well, have a beautiful weekend, everyone. Big Thank shouts you. to Donovan. You guys can find these girls <laughs> under their names uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. You can check out uh, Lauren's podcasts. They're very funny. You can check mm-hmm. out Lucy's new show coming out. And uh, we Sarah you just know where to find us. Sarah says she's life. waiting, waiting for the ball, <laughs> waiting for all of the balls to drop. All for which... my balls to drop. I'm just waiting for my balls to drop, guys. I'm waiting for your balls to drop. Um, uh, all right, guys, have a good weekend. Bye. Thanks, bye, I everyone. Love you, ladies. Love bye, you guys. Bye.